Um, Jade. We'll talk to Jade next. Hi, Jade. Hi. Hi, Jade. Hi. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everything goes well with you, Matt, and all your meds and stuff. You guys have been super helpful with my whole process. Um, I guess to like catch you guys up real quick. Um, yes. I recently got diagnosed with cancer up in like near the end of last year, as well as going through with like COVID and like just Oof. other personal things in my life. Um, wow. it's a, so it's been a lot. Um, well, well, thank you for, for sharing that. And I'm so glad that, you know, yeah. even, despite the diagnosis that you're able to call in and talk uh, to us because that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, it's been like a whole like adventure to be able to try to be a more open person. Um, when I was, so with this being a thing, I considered myself a spiritualist. <laughs> and so like, I grounded up like eggshells and like had like ash from like, um, like whatever I could find, like whatever I burned. And in my little ceremonies, I did like little moon things. And, um, and that was from, and I had originally been a, grown up as a theist. And so like, I've gone through all these periods of trying to like figure out what is life. And I'm getting people being like, well, like I'll pray for you. Just pray. Like, um, like I'll, like you should probably look into the Bible, like look for God, like ask him for help. And it's just like, when I was younger and I was trying to figure out like my sexuality and like my gender identity. And this was all stuff that I was questioning when I was like five, when I was like really young. And as well as like seeing how hypocritical and like how sometimes how toxic it was. And then mm -hmm. trying to figure out like, well, God doesn't like the way that I am, but it feels so natural. And so like, I remember right. like praying so much and being like, God, like help me out. Like, tell me I'm not like, show me a sign. And so it was like, I would, I would get like these thoughts of like, well, you're not okay. And then there was a moment after I was, I walked, like I walked down the aisle and I considered myself saved. I was still like, feeling like as if I was rejecting as part of myself. And so like, I would still pray. And then that thought of like, you're not okay. Just turned into like, it almost felt as if like my thoughts had evolved. And I was like, this, these are your thoughts. Like these aren't like, this isn't God telling you anything. This is you just trying to find comfort in what it is. And so like, I've, and then, then that year it was 2014 and the, um, and the, um, like the whole, you know, we were allowed, we're allowed to get married. Like gay marriage was like loud. And so that, arced up a whole bunch of conversations in our church people were saying derogatory things and like gay like oh they're building our bridge to hell like with gay land like and i'm like what the hell are you guys even talking about like this isn't this is this is hurting me on the inside and so i broke away from being um a theist and then i found spiritualism and it's helped me in the way of like crystals as a placebo is what i'm finding out now mm -hmm. and and so like now that I have, now that I have, I'm dealing with chemotherapy currently, I'm about to go through my last week right now and it's been going really well. Oh, good. Good. I good. I, yeah, yeah, um, I haven't prayed. I haven't turned my crystals. I haven't turned to my eggshells. And like, I feel like as if though, like my whole life, like I keep giving credit to like, oh, well, first it was God who got me through the, the rough young years. And then when God was rejecting me for being just, just being who I was, I turned to crystals and that like, I have cancer now. So it's like, it's obviously wasn't the crystals. It wasn't me not worshiping like the moon or whatever enough. Like it was, it's really just life. Like it's me just constantly just, I have to give myself more credit and being strong. But the thing that I struggle with is like, like knowing that there's nothing and that I feel like I've almost like all that time that I've wasted, like, you know, grinding eggshells or doing whatever the hell kind of spiritual practices I was like I was doing, I could have been out volunteering way more. I could have been out doing so much more things with my life than feeling as if so. And this is why it also triggered, this had triggered, this was triggered in my whole chemotherapy was like, Oh, well, you know what? Like life has been so hard and I'm constantly just trying to love everybody. And like, it just constantly feel like this world is filled with so much hate. And like, maybe this was like, I'm supposed to reject the chemotherapy and like, I just die. And like, you know, and then I move on to the next life or I move on to like, whatever the hell there is. Cause I still felt like there was, and I have to realize like, there's nothing. And I, I almost felt like I almost like killed myself in a, like a weird, like, spiritual way like I'm done with this and so like I'm trying to figure out like how to be okay with like you know that there's nothing and like I have to really like especially when I'm done with this whole chemotherapy like I have to view every day as if it's like it could be my last because I don't know like nobody knows and I want to at least die knowing that I tried 
helping in any way that I could to humanity. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out how to be okay with the nothingness and like my whole idea of like reincarnation and uh, reincarnation and like an astral plane was like, oh, well, we have electrons and we have electricity in our brains. And that like, that can't uh, be destroyed. Uh, <laughs> you, know I mean? so, you said brain. I went, no. Nah. <laughs> you have pushed the magic button that turns Shannon on. Uh, welcome to the show. <laughs> Somebody said brain. <laughs> Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Jay. Like you, th your story is amazing. Like it's, I want to congratulate you because it sounds like I feel like there's nothing really I can contribute aside from maybe having the conversation about mortality and grappling with mortality. But you came to all of this yourself through tremendous um, adversity, and I'm proud of you. And I know that other people that have heard your story right now probably recognize a portion of themselves in at least some of it and hearing your strength going through it fun. would probably help a lot of other people so thank you for sharing it but if if grappling with mortality is something that you would like to have to to hear our opinions about um i can i can definitely yeah, speak I, towards I that another thing i would want to hear yes sorry yeah because it sounds like at the end of it that's like that's the one thing that's left that you're struggling with and you were able to come to come to terms with most of the rest of it as you were going through your journey despite the adversity. So the thing that I think about regarding morality is that, or mortality, um, is that me knowing that my life is finite is actually one of the best gifts I was ever given because as a Christian, I thought that I was always going to have an after, right? So I didn't ground as much now as I needed to, but I also always thought that I was going to be forgiven, basically, regardless of what I did, all I needed to do was ask to be forgiven, and I could absolve myself. Losing that made, grounded me in the, in the fact that I need to be responsible for my own actions, and that that was something that happened here and now, and also pointed me towards understanding that what I, what I do now and who the relationships that I have now are essentially all I have. But when it comes to the the end is the end, some I can't remember who said it. But maybe it was even Matt that said that. Um, Probably not. But but it was what, what's it going to be like after I die? Basically, the same as it was before I was born. Ah, that is right. that is um, right attributed to Mark Twain. I was dead okay. a billion years before I was born and was never bothered by it one yes, bit. Yes, exactly. I, and and I get that that that's not always like I I love that statement and it, it it opens some people's eyes and other people it doesn't make any difference because the indoctrination into there's an afterlife it's the most important thing that that matters everything you do in this life is about what kind of afterlife you're going to get right. that is so deeply ingrained in some people that just saying well you know hey you weren't bothered before you were born doesn't help everybody That's and right. it's not about getting used to this idea of nothingness that's the scary thing is because people get it in their head that if there is no afterlife, then when they die, they will experience nothingness forever. And they don't know what that means. Right. And it's because yeah. it's nonsense. Exactly. You won't be experiencing anything. There will be no you to experience. So this fear of not existing is, is perhaps better a fear of missing out. And when Christopher Hitchens was near death um, yeah. and we were at the Texas Free Thought Convention, um, he pointed out that it's not like somebody's uh, tapping on you on the shoulder and saying, hey, the party's over, go home. What they're doing is they're tapping you on the shoulder and saying, the party's going to keep going, but you have to leave. And that's the part mm. that is really hard. Yeah, yeah. That actually explains the pain very well. And I guess, and I also want to throw in, um, I guess I also just worry about like, the way that the world goes and people thinking about like how, like, I don't think people think enough about how fragile life is. Like I live in Colorado. And so like, we just had a really bad shooting on mother's day and it's like, dang, like guys, like, can we stop? And then not only that, but like, I am trying to, I come out as having pronouns as like non um, binary and having pronouns of they, them. Um, so trying to like figure all that stuff out, but then to know that there was like an, a huge increase in, 
killing and um, murders with transgender people. Like it was, I think it was like 40, it was 40 something in the last year. And just to know like, oh great, well we have like a whole year left. It's just scary to also feel as if though like you're at the mercy of other people. When all I really want to do is just try to give back as much as I can. I feel as if though like my life, I gave, I, I gave more to humanity than like what my life, you know what I mean? To just dying off and just living for myself. Can I tell you something, Jade, that I think to myself quite frequently that I think is relevant here? Um, you're like, you're calling into this show right now and a lot of people are watching this show and I, I do a show myself on YouTube and I do this show and, and other, and other shows and you get a lot of criticism. You get a lot of attack. Like life is hard sometimes. And sometimes exactly. it's difficult to discern through the noise but what I, what I tell myself frequently and what I tell other people is you may have just saved the life of a person who you will never hear from. You will never know who they are. You will never know that they heard your words and it made a change. But you speaking them could potentially and very likely might have that impact. So just because there is no discernible metric that you can point to that says Jade contributed this much good shit to the world in their life <laughs> doesn't mean that that's not the case. Most of the most profound and important things that you will ever do to impact another person, you may never be told about. So you should always just try to be the best version of yourself, knowing that that might be the outcome, even though you may never know. Right. Yeah. And with this, it, it definitely, it, it definitely like how you said how it gives you like so much more like how you love life so much more every day, just knowing that it's the only yeah. one life that you have, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Like now, it's like all right, when I survive, when I when I finish, when I ha when I'm told that I'm cancer free, I I originally wanted to go to school. I wanted to do so much in the past two years, and I've been waiting, and I've been super safe, and I've been just trying to think about others and. Now that it's like, all right, I can start moving again. And then to be hit with this, it's just like, all right, well, when I can finally like go out into the real, real, real world, get vaccinated and like go to school, try to foster a kid way later in life, give them a better life than what I have and what other kids are able to do or are able to go through or what they would have been put through. Like just to, it just gives me, it gives me a lot of like fire on my ass. I guess. And that's what I'm really happy about. I just get scared about being at the mercy of others and then just knowing that there's nothing. I guess. So I, I think it's just a, a matter of just me being, I guess, okay with it in a way. Good. Jade, I'm go we are going to leave you on that note because I think that's a positive note to leave on despite your current fears. That's a natural thing what? to have. We all have them. And I wish you luck on your journey to work through them. And I appreciated hearing your story today. So thank you for calling in. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And please, please keep fighting. We need you. You're awesome. Okay? Oh. Thank, thank you so much, Jade. Take care. Thanks. Have a good day, Jade.